36 million views and none of them are from me. I feel obligated to watch at this point. Even non-gaming react channels react to this video, so I have to do it. Now, I do know this is five years old, and I do know they supposedly fixed quote-unquote the game, but this is history. We cannot forget how deplorable of a launch this was, especially after all the hype leading into it. To me, this is what truly started the downfall of Bethesda. The hollow tape. If you found this tape, it means that right, everyone this is, is a good intro. Dead, or working at a different office. How did this happen? Well, I'll tell you. Buckle up, buckaroos. Today's lesson is the misfired launch of Fallout 76. Time to relive the pain. June 2018. It began with everyone getting just a little hyped up. Yeah, for the record, I was extremely hyped for this. But, you know, you saw what happened. In the coming days, the coming weeks, the coming months, we realized what we were promised is not exactly what we were getting. So, me, myself, I have never played 76 because by the time it released, I saw what it truly was. Needless to say, I think I made the right decision. But leading up... I was insanely hyped along with everyone else. I mean, we heard what Todd was saying four times the size of Fallout 4. The attention to detail is like 16 times greater. Yada, yada, yada. He was, you know, going crazy as Todd usually does. You see that mountain? You can go there. He was hitting us with all the Todd Howardisms, and we believed him again. You know, you know how it is. We waited long enough, guys. Oh, God. Yes, we have, Todd. I think we have. <laughs> Fallout 76, Bethesda's biggest game yet. My god, it was exciting. And they promised we'd know more at E3. E3 hype time. The press conference. 16 times the detail. 16 times the detail. <laughs> All new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. Four times the map size. It is four times the size of Fallout 4. And it's our biggest one yet. My god, it was exciting. November 14th, 2018. The game goes live with a day one patch of 50 gigabytes. That's how you know the game's really as big as they say it is. For fuck's sake, I'll see you tomorrow. But once that's downloaded, people start logging into the hellscape that is Fallout 76. And oh dear lord, they never fix the bugs. And there are so many of them. Goodbye world, goodbye necks, goodbye body, goodbye <laughs> heads, bugs, 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 everywhere. Server crash. See, like normally we give a pass to Bethesda on buggy games we've grown to expect it, but 76 bugs, brother. Like 100x the normal buggy Bethesda experience, which is saying something. Game crashes. Ah. Old bugs imported from Fallout 4. Use more than one nuke at a time, uh. server's dead. Texture's far too texturous, an all consuming void. Airlock 307. Can't pick up stuff, can't stop asserting dominance with a T pose. <laughs> Frame rate problems, screen tear problems, getting yeah. too swole. That looked getting... disgusting. Not, not the swole man, the screen tearing and the FPS. Underneath the map, getting attacked by invisible enemies, spawning too many enemies. It kind of speaks for itself. Spawning too many god rays. Also, your camp resets after every session, and sometimes it goes underwater. Holotapes randomly play static, but too many holotapes mean none of them will play. Enemy AI is far more A than I. Animations are broken. Surprise. Floating objects and a traveling merchant. Just to name a few. Joseph Anson has a great video that documents just the ones that he found. 1001? That video is three hours oh long. Oh my god. Um, but it gets worse. Error CE348780 can corrupt your data and force you to reinstall the game and console operating system. What? Reinstall the console's operating system? I didn't even hear about this. D players had their computers brick in No time. shot. It bricked your PC? Dude, I knew it was bad. I didn't know it was this bad. 
correctly. Also, when the date rolled over to the 1st of January 2019, the nukes in the game stopped working altogether. <laughs> no one thought it prudent to program in other years in an always- Listen, we let that slide when it's the year 2000? In the current day and age, brother, 2019? Unacceptable. Online game. And a few players were straight up logging into other people's accounts. What? This guy had a level 78 character that was randomly replaced with a level 8 character. Bethesda said they couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> now, many players are not thrilled with this game, and they want Bethesda to know that. And they want everyone else to know that. I've never even seen... Sorry about that car out there. I've never even seen a zero, like, on a review score. I thought you had to give it a one. That too. But Bethesda owns the platform. Is Fallout 76 fun? Yes, it is. Banned for racism. <laughs> Thread locked. They have he didn't like the race mixing in Fallout 76? No direct outlet for their rage. The only solution was to put a torch to everything else. Reddit. Twitter. Bethesda's other games on Steam. The backlash was immense. But surely level heads would prevail. The reviewers would come out and say that the game isn't so bad. Oh dear lord, they hate it. This is so sad. Despacito, play Country Roads. Almost Speaking of that little, uh, guitar riff they did there can you even call that a guitar riff i didn't realize that the ink spots start all of their songs with the same guitar riff i used to think that was just like a, i don't want to set the world on fire thing but then i'm looking at the rest of their songs i'm forgetting the name of the other one in the game or in the show as well and it starts with that same little riff it's a good riff i can't hate on them for it in the west virginia blue ridge mountains and the YouTube community had this to say. It's really fucking boring. I could barely bring myself to play it in order to finish this review. If for those who don't know, it launched with like no NPCs. The only other people in the game were real people. No one on staff wants to play any more of this video game. I'm not going to subject myself to another... 20, 30 hours of this fucking mess. In short, Fallout 76 is morally, technically, and creatively bankrupt. The mods on Bethesda forums were working overtime. The mods on Reddit almost gave up. Look, I'm not saying that some people didn't enjoy and have fun with this game. But what I am saying is that the Metacritic was really funny to read. So what happened? Well, it came out that development was hugely rushed. The deadlines were tight. Too tight. Plus, this wasn't Bethesda's A-Team. It's actually a relatively inexperienced division based in Austin. And the scope of the game kept getting bigger. We're gonna need distant weather systems. Hey, Todd, I stayed up all night and I just We're finished- We're gonna need 16 times the detail. Please, <laughs> Todd, no more. We're gonna need four times the size of Fallout 4. That and they were trying to patchwork the old Bethesda creation engine into a multiplayer framework. What else could you expect? That's why I give my... Yeah, that engine barely runs as is. So trying to just, you know, patchwork that and make it a multiplayer engine. Not too surprised. Kids. Fallout 76. The fool. <laughs> now, Bethesda could tolerate the bugs and the bad reviews and the irate players. But what they couldn't tolerate were the exploits. Um, infinite inventory, infinite invisibility. The frame rate was tied to the game speed, so people were going a lot faster than they should. Server hopping for more items, infinite cash and infinite duplication, unlimited XP, unlimited nuking. The nuclear codes were unencrypted and you could wall clip into the quest room. And someone was given the curse of infinite invincibility. Uh, Naturally, this can really mess with other players' online experience. So Bethesda was ready with the ban hammer this just and a blindfold to wildly flail around and take down anyone who happened by. But Bethesda wasn't satisfied with just banning people. No, they're a progressive company with big ideas. They wanted to give a road to redemption. So support sent out this email to players caught cheating. 
we would be willing to accept an essay on no. why the use of third-party cheat software is detrimental to an online game community. That's right. 500 words on why you're a very naughty boy. That's crazy. Boy. That's just making more work for themselves. I Like, it's funny to me, so I'm kind of down with it. But that's still crazy. But yeah, people who do use outside, you know, cheating engines, they are usually a little bit deplorable if we're going to, you know, call a spade a spade here. Specifically in online games where you're going to ruin the experience of someone else. So this is mad funny. It's crazy. It's out there. But it's mad funny. And they may just give you your account back. But a couple of days later... With that said, if you're just duping items because, you know, wonky coding, GG's hold that L Bethesda. If it's in your game, it's your fault. If they're using the outside engine cheat software, then yeah, dunk them. But if it's just dupes from within the game, that is on you entirely. That's just my stance. The mocking from news outlets caused them to reconsider this approach. One more exploit. In all the Bethesda games, there's a dev room. Every item in the game is kept here. Security has to be top-notch because otherwise, someone could just waltz in and take all of the best items in the game and it would be an absolute disaster. Well, shit. Of course, Bethesda wasn't equipped to deal with the issue. People started flooding in, taking the best items in the game, then selling those items in <laughs> the black market of sorts. Oh, man. At first, they tried the usual approach. Banning people who had some of the best... How does this keep getting funnier? Like, it makes you reinstall your console's OS. It bricks your PC. You have people breaking into the dev room and selling items on the black market. Items in the game. You spent 700 hours just to get the best gun. Die, cheater. Next, they put in a system where players would get tagged if they ever entered the room. And they banned those players. That wasn't much better because people would just start using Smurf accounts. Get in quick with a level 1 account. Get all that good shit, <laughs> then get the fuck out. Then use a duplication glitch to get a ton more of those items. Yeah, see, like this? This is on Bethesda. It's in the game. Bethesda, that is your fault entirely. Then transfer that stuff to your main account, and you're good to go. Bethesda then takes out this level one and calls it mission accomplished. And you've just beaten the game. So the problem continued. Bethesda is running out of ideas to solve it. There's a lot of speculation in the media and among players about how exactly people are getting in, but no one except for the exploiters knows for sure. That said, Bethesda needs to act fast before it ruins the economy of the game. So they wrote another email and sent it out to the Smurfs. Oh boy. <clears throat> uh, hello, Cheetah. Do you want to tell us how you did it and we might unban you, please? Should we not hear back from you, the account will simply remain suspended. It's not known whether this approach worked, but from what I've seen, it's still possible to get into the dev room. Yeah, are you telling me they couldn't figure out how people were getting into the dev room? Okay. November 22nd, 2018. Just a week after the release, the game goes on discount. From 60 to $40. I remember this. To 35 to 30 you can find it for 15 on eBay, <laughs> and in Germany, they're straight up giving it for free when you buy a PlayStation controller. Also, some stores are just zip-tying it to other products. But to Bethesda, it's worth selling the thing at a price close to zero, because it brings people into the Atomic Shop, which is where the real margins are, and it inflates the poor sales figures. Let's have a look at those. The latest figures show 76 sold less than a sixth of what Fallout 4 did. Not good. There's also been a massive oversupply of hard copies. Although, what's the point of a hard copy when the thing is just a cardboard disc telling you to Bro. redeem an online code? Come on. And while sales are low, returns are high. Immediately upon release, people began asking Bethesda for a refund. 76 is not on Steam, it's on Bethesda's own platform. So they have See, I didn't even know that at the time because I was a console pleb. Now it is on Steam, but... The control. If players only played the game for a few hours, then generally they'd get their money back. Oh no, they However, didn't. However, it came out that people were sometimes getting refunds after a full 24 hours oh, of playing. So Quite technically better than Steam. Generous. But then word about this spread to forums. 
then to Reddit, and a post got 12,500 upvotes informing people that this made pretty much everyone eligible for a refund, and the comments told them exactly how to do it. Bethesda was flooded with requests for refunds. And their response? Shut it down, lads. No, no, no one gets a refund now. Everyone go home. Show's over. Robot customer service man, engage. Customers who have downloaded the game are not eligible for a refund. We apologize. Oh, for the damn. They went from 24 hours and you, you get a refund to if you even downloaded it, it's over. So not better than Steam. Okay, cool. Seems legit. Seems fair. All right, Bethesda, gotcha. Die. A few things followed. First, people got mad. One hardcore gamer even trashed a GameStop for refusing his refund. No shot. Is this real? All right, well, you know, like, <laughs> taking it out on the wrong person, <laughs> but I understand the rage. Thank you for calling GameStop. This is Brian. How can I help you? A bit of an overreaction, but probably also fake. Second, Dang it. the media. And third, a class action lawsuit. Their oh, inconsistent damn. refund policy and terms of service may not be strictly legal. November 27th, 2018. So, just to keep track, reinstall the console's OS. Bricked PCs, now a lawsuit. Not counting, you know, the 1001 bugs and like semi outright lies. This is crazy. We're not even halfway through. I don't even want to like hover over these to see what the other marks are in here. We're going to get surprised as we go. Glacio and Rathod LLP filed a class action suit on behalf of customers. Media quickly picked up on that. Their main argument is that it's a sometimes unplayable game owing to its technical problems, then they're refusing refunds, and that Bethesda is engaged in a strategy to release it anyway, and then slowly patch their way into a more playable state. Which, you know, five years after the fact, it appears it's what they did. And you know what? Let me pull it up right now. Let me check how many people are playing this. All right, so this is only counting the Steam players, and as you can see, the 24-hour peak is 46.9k. So... It appears their plan worked. I know the TV show is doing a lot of heavy lifting, but... Updates on this lawsuit are slow, so I'll keep you informed on the second channel. Let's rewind a little bit. Fallout fans made their pre-orders. Oh, the most yeah, the duffel bag. This was some real scumbaggery from Bethesda as well. Kind of reminds me of the Nuka-Cola scumbaggery, where it was like all plastic and garbage. Pre-ordered the Power Armor Edition. Wow. It came with a helmet, box, map, army toys, <sighs> and a genuine West Tech canvas bag. Canvas, keyword. Fast forward to the release. And customers noticed that their precious bags, which are supposed to be made of the finest canvas in the land, Ooh, yummy. look a bit different. <laughs> in fact, it looks like a carry bag the real bag should come in. Bruh. Do they really just advertise one thing and deliver another? can't do that. So there was a surge of backlash, and people began emailing Bethesda, asking for refunds, asking for answers. By this point, customer service is absolutely over it. They are done with the facade, and they send this email in response. Hello. We are sorry that you aren't happy with the bag. The bag shown in the media nah. was a prototype and was too expensive to make. We aren't planning on doing anything about it. Brother, speech zero, so true. Is there a lawsuit for this one? I, I pray there is. That's crazy. This feels worse than the game to me in a way. That's so messed up. That's the whole email. Staff at Bethesda aren't even hiding their contempt anymore. Naturally, the internet goes wild. Are you fucking kidding me? Wow. Wow. Well, I got so mad, I shaved everything off my face. Okay, guys, this is a bit of a PR nightmare. We have to quell the outrage. What do we do? Well, we've got this in-game currency. Let's just give them the minimum amount of that. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> idea. Hear ye, hear ye. Oh, my. Anyone who paid two to three hundred dollars for the Power Armor Edition is hereby entitled to five dollars worth of in-game currency that you'll be able to spend with us. I bet you that bag like costs less than five bucks to make as well. Hundred atoms, 
Fuck yeah. What are you going to do with your Adams? I'm going to buy 5 18ths of the white paint version of the power armor. <laughs> Whoa. What about you? Light wood laminate. Light wood laminate. Light wood laminate. <gasps> Fuck the bag. He's right. Fuck the bag. Light wood laminate. 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 Of course, this was Bethesda's fantasy of what would happen. What really happened is further outrage, and even the media started piling on. Almost heaven. Where's Virgin? It even became part of that class action lawsuit from earlier. There we go. Bethesda Beautiful. All right. So I'm assuming I'll look up in the end of the video what happened with the lawsuit, but I feel like there's no shot Bethesda wasn't forced to pay. They're, they're outright lying multiple times throughout this put out a tweet apologizing for their curt customer service and gave a different excuse for why they didn't make the bags. A shortage of material, apparently. That was quickly debunked. Because it turns out they did make the canvas bag, except they gave them all out to influence. <laughs> oh dear. It's not Clout. the same one, of course, but it's sourced from that Ooh. ever scarce material, canvas. But what's more amusing is that it turns out there is a canvas bag in the game, if you don the postman's outfit, which of course can be found at the atom shop, for 700 atoms. What is this pose? Is this the real pose? Why is he so sassy? The most sassy postal man of all time. Ooh, just short. Well, the bleating from the online community continued and Bethesda's lawyers realized there would be trouble. So they decided to capitulate. All right, fine, we'll make your precious fucking bag. If you want to claim it, you'll have to fill out this form with your name, personal details, address, etc, etc. And we'll ship out the bag to you in four to six Ah, you know, I actually do remember this happening. I still hope they got murdered in court for it, though. But it doesn't quite end there. Because Bethesda is known for bugs. And of course, their website is a buggy mess, too. True. It turns out all of the customer support inquiries are unsecure and open to the public. In fact, <laughs> people can open and close and change them at will. Dude. Listed are details of full legal names, phone numbers, home addresses, and more. Oh you... my god. Apparently, I did not remember enough. How can they be this incompetent, dude? Now I understand why everyone and their mother watches this video. I get the 36 million views. And like most of these views aren't even from like Fallout fans or even gaming fans, at least from what I've seen on the React channels. I get it now. This is bigger than gaming. These dudes are insane. If you've requested your canvas bag, you've just been doxxed. Not knowing how to immediately fix the problem, Bethesda panics and temporarily shuts down the whole website. And that is the tale of the duffel kerfuffle. How could this have been so difficult? They made one for New Vegas. One last piece of merch, a rum drink. Nuka Cola Dark. Yeah, this. Okay, here we go. Pre-orders available in September. Shipped out on November 14th. $80 plus postage and handling. Not cheap. But in return, you got a very cool bootle. Yeah, like that looks awesome, right? Wouldn't you love to display that on a shelf, perhaps? Looks good on the shelf. There a you go. A great conversation piece with the family over Thanksgiving. Or at least it would have been. November 14th came... <sighs> and there was no rum. Uh, okay. A week later on November 21st, an email comes through. There's a delay. Things aren't up to the usual fallout standard, they say. <laughs> the usual fallout standard. All of this just works. Things aren't up to the usual fallout standard. So we'll have it for you soon. No specific date given. One week later. Nothing. Then on December 5th, another email. Good news. We start shipping on December 12th. It's been nearly three months since you pre-ordered. But as a show of good faith, we made this promotional video for you. And this is where things went from tardy to retardy. <laughs> right there. Did you catch that? That's just a regular <sighs> industry bottle and a plastic shell. We paid $80 and waited a quarter of a year for a plastic shell? People were not happy. Look at that ratio. Nothing in the marketing said that it was a plastic shell. Super premium, we were promised. And the media agreed. P 
people began cancelling their orders. Silver Screen tries to convince people that it's not cheap and shitty. It actually costs us twice as much to make the plastic one than the glass one. Then what Bruh. the fuck? We, we spent a hundred hours coding the design. Convincing stuff. So it arrives, just a few days before uh, Christmas. The rum is about the quality you'd expect. Uh, can I swear on this? It's my own shit. Yeah, but no one's really buying it for the rum. You know, that's what makes it so much worse. They're buying it for the collector's piece. And it's just plastic. No. Worse is the design. The oversized lip means liquid can pour inside oh the shell. Hard to oh pour God! How they made this damn thing? I spilled like half the shot. Very dribbly. So you're best off opening the whole thing up to prevent spilling. If you do that, there's a good chance that you'll snap the flimsy plastic. Man. Any liquid will immediately ruin this cheap paper sticker. Some made their own at home, and the quality <laughs> was about on par. But look, if you do want a decent version of this product, there are reputable sellers of them. They're on Etsy. They're far cheaper, and they actually give a shit. Not gonna lie though, some of the memes that came out of this were pretty good. Now, many claim that this was an Damn, that's nostalgic. I used to have one of those, like, fake Babu bowling sets. Mistake. Sorry. Or that customers were at fault for misinterpreting ambiguous marketing. I disagree. All of the marketing shows other glass items. All of the mock-ups show something more akin to frosted glass than plastic. Yep. They give plenty of descriptions. Of I mean, just look at the caps too, you know? Product too. And not once do they mention plastic. And they were engaged in a bunch of other tomfuckery as well. Before the product was even available, they flooded their own product reviews with a bunch of five stars. Bruh. This raised some... Let me read those. This is great, but I need the new Coca-Cola for it to be complete. We just got word of settlement to the East needs our help, General Preston Garvey. Okay. This raised some eyebrows, and people on Reddit even called them out for it. So they deleted them. <laughs> you can see all this activity on the way back machine. Uh, if they only left the Preston Garvey one up there, I think the community would have let it slide. Now, if they're happy to deceive people in this way, it seems silly to give them the benefit of the doubt about the glass. It's also worth quickly talking about the Bethesda merch store. Some of these items are pretty neat. That's cool. Good idea. I'd have that. Oh, hey, I made a video on that. Not, not the lounge pants, the cookbook. I'll put it up here if you want to watch. Fallout 76 pant. Singular. But why is he so mad? The photography is all just slightly... off. This gaudy jacket was mocked relentlessly on social media. Why has Todd never worn this? Yeah. But does the 76 in 2 Oh, God! Yikes. $6 really make it more immersive. And why did they just toss it on the ground? And it comes in this crumpled up toddler body bag. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in merch and you don't have an eye on? Why is she wearing the size XXL? She's clearly not happy about it. But who looked at this and said, Good job, print. Now that's surprising. And what the fuck? They made the bottle properly. <laughs> yeah, one of those, please. But Dude. bigger and brown. Is that so hard? Let's get back to the game. December 2018. There are two new patches released that caused quite a stir. First, the good. For PC, they included a number of quality of life improvements, including push to talk. Wait. Was your mic just always a hot mic before? That's crazy if true. How could you even stream the game then? Okay, Bethesda. But it also brought in field of view sliders. Hooray! Increased stash capacity from 400 pounds to 600 pounds, and a small buff to automatic weapons. Hooray! They decreased the carry weight of bobby pins so it no longer took up 10 to 20% of people's inventory. I got a box of bobby pins the other week that said, that said, weigh these. <laughs> <laughs> there were also upgrades to the camp that allowed for easier construction and a bunch of bug fixes. Hooray. The bad. All right, what'd they do? A whole bunch of unannounced stealth nerfs. They generally made the game grindier. Oh Ammo boy. production was decreased. Fusion cores burnt out faster. Legendary enemies spawned less frequently. On guard, I'll fuck you up. 
And the backlash was significant because everybody knew why Bethesda was doing it. Yeah, you can buy a few. Yep, I was going to say, I assume you can buy fusion cores and ammo, etc. from the Atomic Shop. To encourage people to use the Atomic Shop. Man. And let's talk briefly about that store. Some of the prices are outrageous. A Christmas tree for $12, a Santa outfit for $20. Hear me out, might be controversial because, you know, I'm not a giant corpo corporation. That's a weird wording, but you get what I'm saying. I think you should just give the Christmas trees for free. The holiday spirit, tis the season. Make them buy the Santa suit. Just give them the trees, dude. Let them put a tree up in their little base. Come on. Blue and yellow paint for $18. Oh, look. $3 for the same sweater, vest, and slacks item imported from <laughs> Fallout 4. But the biggest offense of all was the holiday emote Let's bundle. Let's see. $24 for some Christmas-themed emotes. Twice the price of these games. The media agreed that these were egregious prices. But worse, they're engaged in some deceiving marketing practices too. Oh look, it's marked down half price. But it's not. It was released half price. They're artificially jacking up the price, only to then give it a fake limited time discount in order to create a sense of urgency. I but hate like websites that do that to prey upon seniors. It's super annoying to me. SMH at Bethesda. It's, it's only like a little bit better because they're doing it to prey on gamers instead of seniors. The gamers can see through it most of the time, but you know. That's illegal, here in Australia at least, in Canada and in the EU. Reddit quickly picked up on- Not in America, because we're, uh, we're silly over here. ...and pointed it out. Bethesda reacted by scrapping the discount and just setting it as the always intended price. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes of whining now, so I'm just gonna leave it here. I didn't even get a chance to touch on the new pay to win fiasco. The new camera item that lets you teleport, dwindling player numbers. But on the flip side, they're also adding new content and improving the game over time. Heck, No Man's Sky was a surprising comeback. So, maybe Bethesda can do it too. But for now, Todd returns to cryostasis. <laughs> hiding in his bunker until the bombs of outrage stop falling. And returning only when it's time to get our hopes up once again <laughs> oh man and i guess that is what todd's doing huh the fallout show just released as many of you know and most people love it it's very very popular there are some haters of course but most people love it and we all want more fallout and todd's like we want to release fallout games more frequently we're seeing what we can do internally to release more fallout games once again getting our hopes up as is tradition are we gonna get our hopes up? Yes, because we're dumb. At least I am. I wanna have faith. I wanna believe Fallout 5 will be a mega banger. We shall see in nine years. But he was touching on Fallout 76. Like, maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll have a redemption arc a la Fallout... Not Fallout 76. A la No Man's Sky. And from what my viewers have told me, a ton of comments have mentioned that Fallout 76 is actually pretty good now. Arguably better than 4, some are saying, which isn't the highest bar. But I do think Fallout 4 is a good game in its own right. Obviously not as good as New Vegas, not as good as 3, etc, etc. But would I go return to Fallout 76 after seeing all this? Between you and I? No. I'm kind of a hater. I'm kind of petty. I'll hold a grudge. I will. And like after seeing all these misses, brother, I don't know if I can, dude. I don't know if I will ever touch Fallout 76 even though it's supposedly good now, even though they're still releasing updates and DLC for it, this is just so scummy across the board. I can't. I don't wanna. I'm out. If you're enjoying it though, handshake, I'm happy for you. I'll wait for Fallout 5. And if they do the same stuff they did here for Fallout 5, we'll cry then. But thank you very much for watching. I see why so many people have watched this. And if you actually watched my reaction to this, when you've already seen it yourself, mega handshake. I appreciate you more than you know. I appreciate any viewer more than you know. Thanks for watching. Once again, I will see you in the next one.